your energy. The energy design ratings table is a side-by-side -side comparison of your actual project plan, referred as the proposed design, and a baseline model referred to as the standard design. To meet the energy efficiency requirements, the numbers in the proposed design row of your document should be equal to or better than those in the standard design. Lower numbers for source energy, efficiency EDR, and total EDR in your proposed design mean your building is expected to use less energy. In the compliance margin section, positive numbers or zeros indicate that your design meets or even exceeds energy efficiency standards, which is the goal. You'll notice the standards design doesn't have entries in the compliance margins columns because the standard design is a reference point for your project. It's a hypothetical model that is generated by the energy software whose sole purpose is to establish the energy usage limit your actual design needs to meet or improve upon. A result pass at the end of the table confirms that your proposed design meets the standards, which is important for obtaining building permits and proceeding with your project. Also note that footnotes in the table will tell you if your project includes energy efficiency features and renewable energy sources, like in this example. This next table is a detailed breakdown of the previous table comparison between the standards design and your proposed design. Specifically, it provides a breakdown of your home's projected energy consumption for different features of your home, such as heating, cooling, water heating, and lighting. The table then compares how your proposed design performs in each category against the basic standard design. And in looking at the compliance margin columns, you want to see positive numbers or zeros. Positive numbers indicate that your proposed design is expected to perform better in terms of energy efficiency than the standard requirements. However, you may encounter negative numbers like in this example. This isn't a cause for concern because the primary advantage of the energy software approach is its flexibility because it allows for what is referred to as trade-offs. So for example, Think of a negative number in the compliance margin like a gap you can fill. You can patch it up by improving other parts of your building to be more energy efficient. Ultimately, positive numbers or zeros in the total compliance row is what matters. This row takes into account the energy contributions from photovoltaic systems or any energy storage like batteries, which can offset energy consumption, which is detailed in this top portion of the table. The energy use intensity table is a detailed follow-up to both the energy design ratings and energy use summary tables. While the energy design ratings table sets up the competition between the standard code minimum design and your proposed design, and the energy use summary breaks down the anticipated energy use of different home components, this energy use intensity table focuses on the overall efficiency of the building. It's like looking at the overall health of your building, measuring how much energy will be used per square foot, similar to evaluating your car's overall fuel efficiency. The lower the energy usage per square foot in the proposed design, the more efficient your building is, just like a car that uses less gas per mile. The compliance margin and margin percentage columns act as indicators of how much better your design performs compared to the basic requirements. Positive values here mean your building uses less energy than the standard design, which should save you money. These columns confirm that the comprehensive approaches in your design, from insulation to lighting, are effectively reducing energy consumption. And to sum up, this table wraps up the efficiency story told by earlier tables. It's the final confirmation that your building is designed to be an energy-saving rock star. Hey.